Joining us now is the new star of Vigil. Season 2 returns to BBC One tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Uh, Romana Gary, hello. Hi, thanks for having me. No, so happy to see you because I because you were on, I got to see episode 1 of Vigil. And we were saying during the record, you know, people will be worried because we loved the first season and the chance of getting it right again, it's so good. Yeah, it was, I, I, I was uh, like everyone a fan of the show and I was like, how, I don't really know how they're going to follow that, you know, but it is really... <laughs> Really twisty and turny and really exciting. The hooks are just brilliant. No, it really is. Um, uh, no submarine this time. Uh, I guess we should tell people uh, who you play and where you are and how you fit into the story. Yeah, so I play uh, squadron leader Eliza Russell. So this season is not set on a submarine. Uh, it's about uh, drone warfare. So it's a lot about an air base, like big, open, wide open spaces. Um, my part of the story was set um, in the Middle East. And so uh, Saran's character, Amy Silva, comes to solve a crime in this air base in the Middle East. And I'm in charge of that, uh, that operate the, the military part of that operation. So, you know, okay. two powerful women, uh, one from the military, one from the police, kind of going up against each other. Ooh! <laughs> and now you say set in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> it's were, quite a wide were, area. Were yeah. you were, were you actually just sat on a beach in Bognor? Yeah, yeah. They really had to, to crank the lights up. Um, no, we filmed it in Morocco. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Oh, hey, hello. Yeah, look at that. Hello, yeah. vigil budget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very nice. And it struck me watching you in your scenes, because film sets are so... so I, I mean, I, I think it's changing, but by and large, film sets are very male anyway and are you apart from Saran are you the only woman in the army base uh, oh no there's a couple there are a couple more at the table yes there's a, a couple more ca uh, characters of um, uh, women in the story but I mean actually Vigil is a very female heavy show because you've obviously got two female leads you've got Saran and Rose yeah. and then there's you know my character and then a number of other women involved in the story and um, I, you know I think for an action uh, which is essentially what it is sort of action thriller yeah. there's actually a lot of women at the centre of the story which is really great to see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, I did. I mean, do you do things like? Do they make you do a bit of army training before you do this or anything like that? Well, I mean, I read the script <laughs> and was aware, it, it, and it was very heavy. The script was very heavy. There was a there was a scene where I have to I have to jog, and I have a particularly <laughs> extremely slow jogging style. Like I listen to the Today <laughs> program when I'm running. So there's people like walking, people with strollers walking quicker than I'm jogging. So I thought, well, I should maybe just try and like maybe jog a little bit quicker than I normally do, and then. I did do lots of research. Like I, I bought lots of books about women who work in the, uh, who who've, who've worked for the RF. So that yeah. was exciting to do that research. And I, I, this isn't a spoiler at all because at the very beginning of this episode, you suddenly get thrown in at the deep end. Yes, that's right. Uh, um, there's um, an, a, an incident where um, an R pass, which is the sort of um, technical term for the drone uh, test, goes wrong, and um, a lot of soldiers are killed. And um, so, yeah, uh, uh, DCI's Amy Silver is sort of thrown into this, having to solve this case. And it's uh, my squadron, um, Eliza's squadron, that is at the centre of her investigation. But I very much resist having this woman coming and poking her nose into my affairs. So it was really fun to play that scene. Yeah. And uh, it's so scary that the thing that happens, yeah, because you just think, oh, is that the future? Because that, because. Uh, yes, yeah. these drones are used for war. And drones are used for warfare, are they now? Yes, and, and it's like everything that I, I think is sort of commonplace now. It's like the, fu the future has arrived. We're now living in the future. And now I feel like as a human being, you just sort of feel like some kind of horrible remnant of the past. Yeah, <laughs> and also you feel, like, you feel like, who asked for this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't vote for this. Yeah. yeah, whose idea was this? No, it's so, it is properly, properly scary. How many episodes are there? Six. Oh, yeah. that, I mean, that is... In fact, no, I should say episodes one to three are going to be all available on iPlayer. Yeah, so you can do a semi-binge. I think that's the technical term. So you can sort of binge... A demi-binge. Yeah, I think it's very BBC. <laughs> they can say, you can binge until midnight and then you have to go to bed and come back and do a demi-binge. Yeah, finish it up the following week. Oh, yeah. right. And presumably you, you know everything that happens or have they yeah. kept things from you? No, I, I mean, there were parts of the story that I was less familiar with because it is quite split between, you know, there's two parts of the investigation as as was the case in the first season where you have Saran, Saran and Rose Leslie with two different parts of the investigation. But I... I I knew, yeah, I, I knew the whole arc of the story. Yeah. yeah. And because you're filming it, because there's a, a Scottish bit as well, with Dug we should say Dugray Scott has mm -hmm. also joined yeah. uh, the world of Vigil. Was there a rap party? Did you ever meet 
the... I met I met a lot of new people at the rap party. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, when, when I was promoting it, I met a, met a lot of people I'd not had any, and you know, lots of sort of interview questions with people saying, "What was it like working with Do Gray?" And I have no idea. <laughs> I hear he's lovely. Yeah. Word has it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Uh, you are so. I mean, enjoy your Christmas because that's the end of time off for Roman Gary. In fact, are you in rehearsals already for Nackland? No, we start uh, immediately after after Christmas. Yeah, we're going okay. in January. Yeah. And that's going to be at the Young. Uh, at the Young Vic. At the Young Vic. Uh, so this is Nackland. Is it a new play? It, it is in this country. Yes, it's um, it, it was pro- it's a German playwright Marius von Weinberg. So it premiered in Berlin last year. So this is the first uh, English uh, UK iteration of it, uh, UK translation. Yeah, and it's set in modern day Germany. Yeah, but are there flashbacks in it, or just it's about what happened? No, it's a family drama. It's um, a group of people whose father has recently died, and the grown up children are kind of clearing out his house, and they find something quite explosive in the attic, and then it's a sort of very dark, very intense play with a group of people having a kind of intense moral argument about what to do with this thing that they found okay that is something to do with germany's past something yes quite explosive <laughs> to do with germany's past it's very dark but it's like an hour and 15 minutes long so you just go in and have this really intense experience it's really sort of strange funny at times sad at times it's a really amazing play Wow, well sold. You had me at an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I think I we all perked up there. I think I led, I led with that. <laughs> yeah, we were, yeah. All, we were like little meerkats. So we were like, oh, no, Ooh, oh, dinner at oh, yeah. nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, lovely. Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, but then it's so, isn't it odd how jobs happen? So when you... <laughs> So you've got to be in that play at the Young Vic and then you're in cinemas uh, from New Year's Day with One Life, which is a, an extraordinary story. But they, Well, anyway, tell us about that. So, yeah, One Life is um, uh, uh, an account of the life of Sir Nicholas Winton that some people may have heard of. Um, he well, very... It's a famous Esther Ranson yes, thing. Yes, there's yeah. a very famous viral clip from uh, That's Life with Esther Ranson where he was kind of outed as being this hero of World War II because just before the war he went to Czechoslovakia and with a, a group of other people he rescued 650 kids uh, who would almost definitely have been killed by the Nazis sadly but many of their, their families were killed by the Nazis and and took them on tr- put them all on trains and took this mass transit of children across Germany right on the brink of war to safety in England and saving their lives and many of those survivors are still alive so it's a kind of account of that and how he was sort of very unwillingly at the end of his life kind of thrust into the spotlight so it's also a lot about how you know the these days, obviously, everyone is expected to kind of display their accomplishments yeah. all the time. Um, and he was sort of very, uh, very much a man of his age and that he was very modest. And uh, but then you play a woman who uh, history has also not shone a light on. Tell us about her. Yes. Yeah, so I play uh, Doreen Warriner. Great to play a Doreen. That's not a name you hear very often. <laughs> who was an amazing woman. She was, um, you know, a, a Cambridge educated economist in the 1930s. Very unusual job for a woman to do. She kind of was a linguist and she travelled Europe uh, lecturing in economics. And then she got pulled into humanitarian work in Czechoslovakia because there was this massive refugee crisis crisis of just hundreds of thousands of people flooding out of Germany on the brink of war and she was kind of trying to manage these huge uh, unwieldy refugee camps with people with who didn't have food and clothing winter was coming and then it was Nicholas Winton who came and said we just have to get these children out we have to just put them on trains and get them out of the country and 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 yeah so the film dramatizes that that effort between the two of them uh, that sounds amazing so that is a uh, uh, in cinemas from New Year's Day and you it's, it's horrible that things become become timely but it does sound like a very timely story it's a very timely story and it's a real the, the film is a real love letter to the effort of individuals to make a difference in the world and I think particularly at the moment where it can feel very hopeless and what can you do to make a change the film is a real testament to people's ability to make a change and um, so Anthony Hopkins is playing Nicholas Winton and, and uh, Helena Bonham Carter and it's a, it's a sort of very sort of um, beautifully made uh, traditional British film that's also very uplifting in its message and I think it would be um, a great night out in, in the cold nights of yeah, January. A nice way to start your year yeah. with a bit of hope and a bit <laughs> yeah. of a bit of optimism. Uh, well, listen, good luck with a busy, a busy, busy year for you, Romola. And I can't wait to see the next five episodes of Vigil. Mm.
I'm exciting. Thank you. Uh, Vigil kicks off at nine o'clock. Uh, BBC One episodes one to three will then be available on iPlayer. You'll have to wait for the. Fo- when do the next three show up? It's the following week. They make oh, you wait. Why are you stupid BBC? Why yada yada? Uh, thank you very much for coming to see us. Thanks for having me. I hope me. you've got a, a Mac because uh, <laughs> while while we've been talking, the world has ended outside. <laughs> you can't Can see. I just you stay for like can, an hour. You can't see yeah. anything. Yeah, I'll chat to you tomorrow. You'll be. Yeah. We'll find you asleep <laughs> under the Christmas tree. All right, thanks for joining us.